I have an experiment for you. <laughs> okay. Can you hold this cup of water? Sure. Spin in this chair as fast as you can. Keep all the water in that cup. Let's try this. Oh, oh, no, can't do it. So here's why the water isn't spilling out of our cup when it's tipped. This is the centrifugal effect in action. As you're spinning, the water wants to move outwards. So to keep it in the cup, I need to tilt it to keep the water from spilling out over the edge. As I'm spinning faster and faster, I'll tilt it more and more. Whoa, Alex, hey, what's up? This is so cool. <laughs> Thanks, it was pretty fun. It reminds me of a product I designed called the Spin Art Machine. Oh, that sounds cool. Do you wanna learn more about it? Yeah, let's check it out. I am super excited to see how that water experiment is gonna translate into this machine that can make us art. Yeah, so as soon as a drop of paint hits the paper, the spinning paper pushes it out to the side. Just like in our experiment, when water was flung out of the cup while trying to keep it upright. And the faster the motor is spinning, the farther out that paint wants to go. So that's why I see these like radial streaks and they're overlapping. Kids can feel like they don't have to be a professional artist to create beautiful artwork. It's this controlled chaos in a small machine yeah. where you're able to drop your paints in there and have that moment where you don't know what it's gonna look like, but as soon as you open up, it's this surprise of what you created. I love controlled chaos. Yeah. I feel like that's how I live my life. Same. <laughs> this is so fun. I can't wait to make all of my own spin art, but to do that, can you help me build a machine? I would love to. Thank you. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start with this clear side that has this big slot up here. And then I take one of my yellow clips and they're bendy, pretty cool. And then those just slot in from the side, click. And then I just need to make sure that the tabs are facing up. Next, I'm gonna add this wooden wall and make sure that my rounded edge is on top, clip it into place, loosen them up a little bit if we need to. Now I need a few more bendy clips so I can add this tall wall and this short wall. First, I'll add a clip and then this tall wall with the curved part on top and you can see the text right here. Add another clip and then this short wall again with that rounded part on top. Now I can just put this to the side so I can build the rest of my walls. Let's make another long wall just like the last step. The chain will look like this. Now using both of the long walls from the previous steps, we can attach them together now. Now let's double check that we have everything in the right order. We have a clip and then a clear wall with a hole up top, clip, short wall, clip, tall wall, clip, short wall, clip, clear wall, clip, short wall, clip, tall wall, clip, short wall. And make sure that all of the round edges are up top. Now we take this long connection of walls and we bend it into a circle. Right here, this clip meets the wooden wall and snap, we have a ring. Grab the light blue elastic and put the metal ends through these holes. Pull the end so it lies flat on the inside. Now let's grab the motor and the motor mount. The motor slides into the mount just like this. So the bottom of the motor is in this circle and the top, the shaft, is here. And then make sure to tuck the wire through so that it's coming out the side. I love a project that uses a motor. It's so cool that this is just powered by electricity and can translate it into this spinning motion. Hey Maddie, could you check this out for me? First, you want to make sure that you don't see two slits over on this side. And next, make sure that this wire is tucked up over the ring below. Now I'll grab the wooden base with the blank side up. There's no etching over here. Put the motor into this center hole, hold it up, and I'll put a bolt through this hole. Ah, uh, yeah, this can be tricky without two people. Here, let me help you flip this. Oh, thanks. And then I'll screw this nut on the other side. Grab another bolt and nut and do the same thing on the other side. And then I just need to make sure that the nut and bolt and everything is tight against the wood. Now it's time to attach the base to the spin plate. The spin plate is this wooden piece with this blue plastic piece on top. And now I'm going to attach the motor from the base onto here. So this metal shaft from the motor goes into this hole on the blue piece on the spin plate. Press it down all the way. 
and this is what it looks like on the other side. Now I'll put my assembled base on top of all of these walls that we connected earlier with the legs up. The clear panel here with this hole goes into this slot, which is facing the direction of all of these holes in the base. First, line up all of your legs so that they go through the slots. Then, once all the legs are in, make sure that the rest of the sides are all clicked into place. To double check that the base is all the way down, I can look from the side and make sure that the walls are pressed against the base and that there's no gaps all the way around. Grab the clear O-rings and add them to these feet poking out the bottom. They should fit into these notches on the side. O-rings only go on these three feet, not this one in the front with a slot. Time to grab your battery pack. Pull out this plastic tab from the side and make sure that it's off. This little plastic tab keeps the batteries from draining while the crate is on its way to you. But now we wanna take it out so electricity can flow to the motor. This switch is gonna land in this rectangle here. Put it into the slot and make sure that the wire is outside of the slot. Now let's use this clip to secure the battery pack in place. The clip goes on the sides of these ridges and then into the hole in the base. It hugs the outside of these ridges on the side of the battery pack and then clips in place on this wooden slot. Let's connect the battery pack to the motor. Just plug these two connections together and then flip it over. It's starting to look like a spin art machine. Turn it on and see if the plate spins. Whoa. Wow, cool. If the plate isn't spinning, make sure that you pull that clear tab out of the battery pack and try turning it over. Make sure the connections are nice and secure. Now we need these small red clips. Connect all three of them together, one at a time. I have one facing up, one facing down, and then another one facing up. Should look like this. We just made a hinge with those little red clips. You can attach them right here into these little slots on the clear top. All right, this is the last step. I have my lid, clip it into this little clear panel, and I made a spin art machine. Okay, I'm gonna get ready to make some art, so I'll add all my paints. When you were designing this, can you tell me a bit about how kids played with it? What did you see during playtesting? We saw a lot of really fun strategies from them, from putting 3D origami cranes in there and seeing oh, the effects so of the paint on something three-dimensional. Yeah, to, next level. Yes, you know, just experimenting with the paints and holding them really close up to a pie. And yeah. And got totally different effects that I hadn't come across when I was playing with it. Let's pick out some paper. Mm -hmm. Now that we have the square in there, you'll see that since each of the edges are flat, we're going to want to turn these paper keepers around. Oh, so neat. They have the flat edge facing it. Mm -hmm. And then slide them into the center. Oh, so cool. So I could use any size of paper. So what if I wanted to use the circle paper? We can turn these four sliders around so mm -hmm. that the curved side faces inward. And then you're going to want to make sure they're all the way to the outer edge. And then you can place your new circle paper. Oh, nice. Okay, I want to do an art experiment. I think I'll do, like you were talking about, far away or close to it. Okay, I'll start with close. I, oh, it takes it so fast. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, cool. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> You're so tall. <laughs> ah! Whoa! Are you impressed with my aim? This is pretty good. I am. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. One other way to play is to touch the tip of the paint directly to the paper for more control. Oh, cool. Let's try it. Oh, wow. Ooh. I'm creating these perfect little rings. Wow, that looks so cool. Mm -hmm. I just get right up to it and squeeze a little bit. So I got these more like perfectly concentric circles, but since it's still spinning, some of the paint is splaying out. And then you can see, since purple is my favorite, I put a lot more purple. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> it's spread out all over it. Another fun thing to try is to add a bunch of blobs of paint onto the paper before you turn it on and then turn around to see what happens. <laughs> oh, cool. Mixing it up. Let's try it. Blob. Blue. Blob. Oh, cool. I can see it all spraying out to the sides and hitting the walls. <laughs> Ooh. 
It looks like a bunch of shooting stars. That's wow. so cool. <laughs> it's like those carnival rides. Have you been on those where they spin really fast and you get pressed up against the walls? Ooh, yeah, yes. that's what the paint's doing. <laughs> that's so fun. And one more tip. If the paint gets stuck in the tube, make sure the tip is fully snipped off. And if it's still stuck, give it a little shake. Look at this gallery I've created. Beautiful. I can't wait to decorate my whole room with these. I think we should frame one. Yeah, do you have anything? It comes with this stand that we can cut out. Oh, cool. I'm gonna fold down on these darker lines mm -hmm. and then up on the white one. So nifty, this like flat rectangle turns into a stand for my art. So now that we have the stand, you can even cut out and add a little title on it. So this one's my favorite. I'm gonna name it Colorful Chaos. Ooh. This was so much fun. It actually inspired us to make an even bigger version of the spin art machine. To see that, check out our channel. Bye. This one, a little tricky. That's why you're here, you're the grown up. Right, and now we're ready to go. Okay, <laughs> cool. Can I get started now? <laughs> <laughs> but I want to start painting. <laughs>